Call the meeting to order. Thank you for joining us this evening. This is a regularly scheduled Greer City Council meeting called and convened this the 24th of March 2015 being duly assembled. We'll start the meeting by joining together in the Pledge of Allegiance, then an invocation led by Councilman Jay Arrowood. If you would please rise and join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now thanking you for this beautiful day that you have created. I thank you for blessing this city, and I thank you for this council that you have allowed to serve the citizens. Now, as we go through tonight conducting the business of your city, lead and guide us. Give us the wisdom that we need to make the decisions that will be always pleasing in your sight. In your holy name I pray. Amen. 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 We allow public input during a time that we set aside called our public forum. Ms. Duncan, did anyone uh, request to speak in public forum this, this evening? No, sir. With that, then, we'll move to the minutes of the council meeting from March 10th, 2015. Council, those are contained in your packet. I'll entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. Have, I have a motion and a second. Any items of note for the clerk? Hearing none, Ms. Duncan? Mr. Earwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bennis? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council departmental reports are contained in your packet as well. You'll see the activity from February 2015. That also includes financial information that Mr. Seifert will review for us. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Tonight we bring to you the budget report for February 2015. First, we'll start with the general fund. At, the, at February 28, 2015, we have general fund revenue recorded of $12,839,260. General fund expenditures recorded of $11,400,793. And they're referencing that report that is 8% under budget on the expenditure side. Moving to the dashboards for the general fund, we have a positive benchmark variance of $909,437. And then a positive benchmark variance on the expenditure side of $636,602. Adding those two together, we have an overall positive variance of $1,546,039. And then finally, for the general fund, we have a carrying cash balance at February 2015 of $9,225,215. Now we'll move to our, one of our second primary funds, that's our hospitality fund. We have revenue recorded of $1,152,725. And for February, that is 6% of the budget on the revenue side. For expenditures, we have reported $656,788. That is 25% on the budget. And then a carrying cash balance of $924,660. And our final major fund is our stormwater fund. We have revenue reported of $433,822. That amount is right on budget for this time of year. For our expenditures, we have reported $525,809. And uh, right now, we've, uh, that we have a major fund transfer. So for February, it's showing at 21% over budget. Um, but that is explainable for the inner fund transfer. And then we have a carrying cash balance of February of $783,207. That is the summary budget report for our three major funds. I'd be happy to take any questions you may have. Council? Thank you, sir. We appreciate the information. Thank you. With that, we'll uh, move to our presentation this evening. As uh, you can uh, tell by these dapper gentlemen that have joined us here in the front of the room, it is time for our annual report. 
for Chief Harvey and uh, his executive team uh, in regards to the fire department. And um, we look forward to their presentation and information in that regard. And so thank you for, uh, for joining us, gentlemen. Thank you, Mayor, Council. The uh, closer I get to uh, May the 1st, the, uh, I'm constantly humble each day. And how fortunate, blessed I have been in my career to work with these uh, fine men behind me and those that are not able to be here with us tonight. And it's truly their dedication uh, and their commitment. their willingness to serve that has made this department what it is each and every day. Uh, as we said, the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, it reminded me of just a request last week. We had, a, as I'm sure you're all aware, a Korean War victim remains came into GSP last week. And uh, we were approached by the mortuary and they wanted us to help set up a huge American flag that we often do for our loss of lives from our soldiers. And uh, there was no hesitation about it. And even two off duty individuals, one here now, the Denver Chuck McConnell came back and set that up in the rain today. It didn't matter what we're gonna do. We're gonna do what we need to do. So I'm proud once again and it probably uh, unless something changes, I guess it'll be my last official report to council. Again, in 2014, we want to talk a little bit about our call volume and the types of calls that we did in 2014. Uh, we responded to a total of 2,457 calls in 2014. This averages out to seven to eight calls per day. Again, from the graphs, you can see 67% were medical-related calls or MBAs, 9% were public service calls, 8% were false alarms, or calls. Of our public service calls, uh, 229 service calls in 2014. In particular, these are most of the uh, lifting assistance calls. We ran 105 service calls to one address. It has uh, become an issue to where uh, already this year uh, we have ran uh, 68 times the same address. We have involved the SAS, uh, we have involved the police department, and we're just not are able to get the resources we need uh, to either convince the individual that he needs to go to other places and be taken care of properly as he is uh, sane and is able to make his own decisions. It just is a, it's a, really starting to tax the resources of the department because you always have to send two people. And it's um, the only thing pretty much regular about it is the 7.30 a.m. call, it seems like. But there's anywhere from 3 a.m. or we may go four times a day sometimes. Mm -hmm. Just to get him up, get him back to the bed. Um, and I bring it to you because it is really becoming an issue that we're trying to address. And then the, the second thing is how do you not go to that call and go to somebody else that needs the lifting assistance? So we're dealing with that on the public service side. It really is an abuse of the system, what it is, but it, we haven't found the mechanism to make it better or make it easier yet. Chief, excuse me, Chief. Uh, do we use the new, um, the, the uh, system that the, the dispatchers have now that, that goes through the screening process when we get calls like this. So th does this person understand that they oh, are they understand priority so. level lower than, than anything else? Yeah, they, and, they, and they don't want EMS. I'll tell you off the bat, they don't want EMS. I just need lifting assistance. I just need assistance in getting back to the bed. And, uh, are we not borderline on a case where this isn't a vulnerable adult? That, 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 that's the avenue that we've been pursuing there. And uh, DSS is a uh, training officer. Josh Holzheimer has been in touch with DSS multiple times. And uh, basically, uh, they say his, his mother is there 
and but she's not able to pick him up. She's out, and uh, and we feel like he's a vulnerable adult, unable to for self-preservation, getting himself back and forth from the bathroom to the bed. Uh, I guess it's easy. They're really utilizing the system to its fullest benefit for them at this time. Uh, the thing of it is, is it is rare have we ever been that we've had to call an EMS. It's always been just get me back to the bed. And, uh, and it's, I think it's <coughs> official diagnosis is a, is a muscular dystrophy, I believe, something along those terms. Uh, yeah, there is a disability there, and uh, but he just doesn't utilize things like the walker that he has at times. And it's just it's just taxing to the resources that we have. And then it's uh, almost we know when the time drops, sometimes that's where we're going. The chief, in about another month, you're gonna have a lot of free time. If you could give him. <laughs> <laughs> We are continuing to look into it, try to find other avenues. Uh, uh, we even talked to people from uh, Able that came and spoke to the last month about what we possibly could do to help with that. It's pretty much all said and done. He doesn't want any help. He, he just wants the lifting assistance what he wants. So we're pursuing those options and keep we're keeping a case file on it for how many calls we do run. And we're showing that to DSS, but uh, to this point we haven't made any progress. But I bring it to you as it is becoming an issue, a constant issue. With that being said, uh, it's almost still three to one. The uh, amount of marathon calls we run in Greenville County uh, versus Spartanburg County. You can see from the graph there, 480 in Spartanburg and 1139 in Greenville County. Uh, still a reduction of calls because we are uh, critiquing uh, and uh, uh, doing the uh, Delta Echo responses on these calls now. So we're not answering a lot of calls that we used to. However, you know, as I said, we're still doing the lifting system. Uh, also, the fire marshal, as you can see, the inspections were 1,199 this year. Uh, there was 954 violations found. Uh, the violations corrected were 699. Uh, the fires investigated were nine. Uh, we did public education. Uh, 5,752 people received public fire education. Uh, we installed 242 car seats. The uh, plans reviewed, the fire marshal's office conducted 99 plans reviewed. Certificate of occupancies issued was uh, 122. Uh, special project hours I think is, 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 is something that we've been doing. Uh, for example, uh, we are constantly uh, in the old Alabama hospital going in to making sure the facilities still secure, uh, no new entries, break-ins to that area. Um, it's the uh, fire investigations that we conduct as a part of uh, our, some of our personnel being members of the uh, Spartanburg County Fire Investigation Team. And actually, we actually had uh, two of our personnel, uh, the five fatalities that they had in the apartment complex that investigated those fires. And then you can see the fire prevention training hours along with the permits. There's 27 permits issued for a total of dollar value of $8,159.25. Our training hours, uh, it's a very busy year once again. 8,383 hours of training. On the average, the city of rear firefighters complete 209 hours or more of training annually. All members have took at least one class of the National Fire Academy. Uh, you can see some of the higher categories of the driver operator training uh, required by ISO to do annual driver operator training. Uh, you also can see that the uh, 
medical in-service training hours is pretty much the highest, 744. Uh, each month, uh, all our EMTs, and we are at the point now where we only have two of our line personnel that are not EMTs in the department, uh, have to take in-service training so that they don't have to go back and take a fresher class again in three years. Uh, again, you can see uh, the total of 8,382 hours of training in 2014. Some major training and consequence. Uh, our Fire Marshal Scott Keeley is obtained his ICC plans examiner this past year. Deputy Fire Marshal Carl Howell received his plans examiner one, excuse me, uh, inspector level one. And the following individuals received their EMTs. Todd Wilson, Thomas Kickler, Brian Collins, Macaulay Hanna, and Drew Hall. And as I said, yet again, we're down to only two personnel that are not EMTs in the department. Major events, uh, Riverwood Farms Fire, as you know, was probably the biggest event in 2014. We had a fire loss of $1.7 million that day, all because of a grass fire, this car a cigarette. Uh, two major structures, one home, one uh, uh, building with three condos, and then nine other homes that sustained damage that day. I bring this to your attention again because the good that came out of this immediately was public fire education. We were able to go into neighboring and subdivisions and this subdivision and immediately talk about landscape design because landscape design contributed to this fire and, and made this fire spread as fast as it did. Not only that, but the, uh, the uh, humidity, the winds that day, all contribute to it. It's kind of a purpose going type of fire event. But we've been involved with uh, two other communities other than Riverwood Farms since the fire. And people are looking at what they can do better. Even as far as not just landscape design, but you always love to hear farmers say, what can we do to have another way out of here? They're looking at alternatives as far as exits to get out of their subdivision. So it's been a, it's been a while. It's a devastating event. It has been a positive outcome from the public education side. Also, a major event was the flash flood on August 9th. Uh, the, that night from 8.30 uh, p.m. to 12.30 uh, a.m., we rescued a total of seven victims. Uh, there were four victims in the Memorial Drive extension covered and washed out. You don't usually go to a, a uh, rescue uh, people in a, in, a, in a culvert that's washed out. Especially, you know, years ago when you see somebody in a wedding dress. Uh, it was a weird <laughs> event. Uh, this lady had just came from a wedding and her sister was in the car down in there and she was in the wedding dress trying to get her sister out of the car. Oh, man. Strange event. Uh, also, on Maple Drive in our fire district side, we utilized uh, our units along with Duncan and Tiger River to make a rescue there. You can see how high the water and we've had this medical drive incident before. We're very familiar with that flooding situation. Uh, we also had calls in the Barrington Woods trailer park that night uh, that we had to uh, evacuate some people out from mobile homes. Uh, I'm bringing this in as a major event because it was a major event. Our platform was uh, involved in an accident in July, uh, which was the same month as the, the bridge was washed out, the culvert was washed out, the platform was fixed, the bridge was not fixed yet. I know we all know about that. But uh, the, uh, the platform I bring it to your attention again because uh, this accident was not our fault. The driver of the other vehicle crossed over the other line, struck our vehicle. Uh, causing uh, final damage of $62,000. It only had the minimum insurance of $25,000 liability. So the city's insurance had to pick up $37,000. And I know uh, Mr. Gregory will agree with me on this, is that uh, uh, we would love to see our legislators raise the minimum uh, liability limits because you know, this, this is a, you know, uncalled that you have to put out, the city's insurance has to put out $37,000 in no fault of our own. 
And it shows how quickly 25,000 is shot in any kind of accident, you know, as a minimum, uh, just in regular vehicles. Uh, the, the aerial is back in service now, no problems. But uh, I just had to put that in this year as it was a major event because we were without the aerial for five months. So uh, luckily no major, we had our agreements in place and we had aerial coming when we needed. Uh, but we were without the service for five months. Capital improvements, we built a 30 by 50 storage building out of the station too, adjacent to the training tower. It houses uh, our lawn equipment, it houses this, the, uh, the equipment previously been in the storage buildings outside, and it also houses the old 41 shell in the fire truck. Uh, we replaced our intercom and hazing system and headquarters, and we purchased three new apparatus this past year. Uh, fire marshal vehicle, engine two, and squad six. As you well aware and have seen, uh, our command vehicles are going to white for the red stripes. And, uh, after many years of trying to, to find red vehicles, each year it has, you can find uh, red in this vehicle, but you can't find it in a SUV, or you can't find it in a pickup truck. So we made the decision to go with our white as our command vehicles. And it also gives us the flexibility to move the vehicles down and transition out to other vehicles into other departments of the city. Of course, our uh, Squad 6 is our new uh, expedition that replaced our 2002 Tahoe and the new pump that we got last year. Under grant fundings, we are very fortunate from Spartanburg County. We got $16,000 in a zero max grant from the Spartanburg County Fire Advisory Board for hose. We got $2,500 for Walmart for our fire smoke detector program. Factor Mutual, we got $2,330 for new iPads. And for the Municipal Association, we got $2,000 for a max on turnout here. Special recognition and awards. Uh, we almost every year have some of our personnel getting a life-saving award from uh, Greenville EMS. This year, Lieutenant Norris and Engineer Wilson received that award for cardiac arrest say uh, myself I, I received the duke energy system of the year award and uh, was inducted into the spartan county fire chiefs hall of fame and also uh, the south carolina firefighters hall of fame community involvement again we we uh, have preached it and, and lived it uh, mda we were very big in mda again we fed 180 campers Camp this past year, we raised over two thousand dollars between boot drives and car washes. We involved the community in our one hundred year celebration on November first. We had uh, multiple events that day from the uh, car seat checks to uh, the uh, open house, the fire truck muster, and such. And then we participate in the. Uh, annual St. Patrick's Day Parade in Greenville. With that, I hope to pull up our questions that you might have concerning our annual report from 2015. Council. Chief, outside of the one gentleman that you referenced earlier with the lift assist, is, is it an issue providing that service? Not usually. Uh, we, you know, we've had some, we've had some repeat customers, and but not to the tune of uh, this individual. Uh, you know, maybe a dozen times that we've had to go, and, uh, and uh, we're very uh, understanding about his situation, and have tried to address that from alternative means. You know, what could be done. Uh, you know, ultimately, uh, we can stop doing lifting as a whole, but I don't know that you, you or the department, or you want the department to do that. Yeah. Um, there's a need out there at times that uh, um, we can simply, if we have the available, it is not a high priority call now. If we're tied up, it may be a while before we get there. And, uh, and um, we have actually told the dispatchers let them know that it would be a while before we get there that we're out on another call. So it's, it's not a high priority call. And then some may actually even have to come, um, I think it was this morning, they had to come from station two. 
come and can help get the individual. Is there some type of liability or something if you set a maximum? Can you can you do anything like that? No, I, I don't know that there there is a liability. You know, it's, it's, as long as the, the individual, it's sort of, I give you a similar situation where a one time guy, and, and it was another a vulnerable adult type situation. Many years ago, we had an individual that we were trying. We kept, um, it was a very uh, overweight individual that would have to go to the hospital and uh, we would have to take two ground ladders and Captain Merrill was aware of it. Two ambulance crews and two backboards and, and have to load them into the back, take the journey out of the ambulance and get them in the ambulance. And, and then they would call up two or three days later one of us to come help unload them and get them back in the house. Well, that's a little bit different situation because we found it on the advice of our city attorney at that time. We were putting an adult that if he couldn't stand up and turn sideways, he couldn't get through the door to get out of his own house. We were putting him back in that house. It was not an emergency situation for us to put him back in that house. So that's been pretty much an entirely different, while somewhat similar situation. So uh, we we've tried to look at alternatives and, uh, and 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 as far as if we're not available, we can always send the EMS, but they're but they're, they're going to tell them they don't want the EMS. And there is, folks, there is some home health care available, but it's not there 24 hours a day. And the uh, mother who wants the home health care at least, she's not going to do it. Hmm. It's a tough spot. It, it is. It is. I mean, it's, uh, it's probably one to bring it to your attention because it is kind of an issue as far as service delivery. I think you said too you're going to meet with uh, legislators tomorrow. Yes. Make sure you mention that. Yes. The insurance, uh, the minimum. Oh yeah, yeah I'm definitely going to mention that. Business license fee. Yes. Because there should be some some type of exception to fit situations like that. I mean, obviously, you know, our insurance providers shouldn't have to pick up the that large of a gap. Yeah, and we were pretty much told from our insurance advisor that. We attempted to do subjugation against that person, we wouldn't have got the twenty-five thousand from the insurance. There is insurance company starting. With. So it is it is a, a mess. Really is. Others? Chief, I know you said that you was proud to work with your staff, but is it true that uh, Mr. Brown's gonna be on uh, from GQ? <laughs> 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 that was loaded, Mr. Brown. I knew that was coming. Well, Chief, we um, appreciate all that you and, and your staff does on an annual basis, and um, and um, thank you for the service that you provide to this community. Um, you know, as we uh, continue to struggle with, uh, with with weighty and thorny issues, sometimes we we do know that we can count on the uh, career fire department whenever uh, whenever there's a need that arises. And uh, we we thank you for for your service to our community, to to everybody on your staff. And uh, please please convey that to them and uh, to your years of service as well too, which we will. Uh, have opportunity to commemorate, but um, just um, our thanks to, to you and that department for all that you do. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. With that, then, we'll move to the administrator's report. Mr. Driggers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Um, I do echo your sentiments uh, concerning the men of our fire department. Um, we have an opportunity um, with our local chamber of commerce uh, tomorrow evening we will be recognizing uh, the uh, the heroic efforts of our public safety officials both our police officers and our firefighters 
uh, will be honored uh, tomorrow evening through the Greater Greer Chamber of Commerce uh, Public uh, Safety Appreciation Dinner. Uh, several of you will be attending with us tomorrow night. We'll have an opportunity to make a few comments tomorrow evening on that as well. Uh, but again, we sincerely appreciate the efforts of, um, of all of our public safety officials, and tonight we especially recognize those in our fire department. Appreciate their service. A couple of calendar items uh, to make you aware of. Um, we will, on uh, April the 23rd, uh, we will be participating with our partners with the Partnership for Tomorrow and with the Kimley Horn Consulting Team uh, that you will be receiving some information and invitation to participate uh, on a Thursday evening. Um, that program will begin at 6 p.m. that evening, uh, but we will be doing uh, some master, the master plan review. Uh, that document is in its final stages. Uh, we've had an opportunity to meet with the Partnership for Tomorrow Board of Directors, also with the steering committee uh, that has been working on this project for the last couple of years, uh, and we are, uh, we are at the end of that process. So we are looking forward uh, to uh, presenting uh, the final rough draft of that uh, document. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to offer some feedback on that as we will then uh, gather again at the end of May uh, for the final presentation of that community master plan. We'll have some additional information coming to you on that. Um, we asked uh, you at the last meeting uh, about the opportunity for us to present a workshop uh, concerning uh, a study that we've recently concluded, that is our classification and compensation study. Uh, the consultant group uh, out of Florida will, uh, will be joining us. We will do that on an off Tuesday evening. That workshop will be on April 21st. Uh, but I did, we, we had some feedback of council of what time you would like for that meeting to begin since it's a workshop setting. Uh, so I will ask if you would please, if you'll uh, Give me some idea of when that would be convenient for you. There's some mention that we may want to move it up a little earlier in the evening. We're expecting that workshop will probably take about two to three hours. Um, the workshop will be in executive session because we will be discussing specifics uh, to some of, the, um, some of the positions and salaries of, uh, of our employees. And so we'll be conducting that session in executive session, uh, but it will require uh, about two to three hours on that evening. So again, I'll ask if you can share with me uh, after the meeting tonight or with Mayor Danner, and, uh, and we'll get that scheduled. Also, um, we have our Amnesty Day. Our annual Amnesty Day will be coming up. Uh, that is on Saturday, April the 25th. Um, we are looking forward to that. It is growing each and every year. Uh, again, we will be uh, providing information to our community, uh, to all of our residents concerning Amnesty Day, but as you are well aware, that's the opportunity to bring in some of those items that we do not normally collect at curbside. Uh, we find that this is a great avenue for us to, uh, to help our residents as they do a little spring cleaning, uh, and it also helps us that we're not trying to retrieve any of those disallowed items for them, uh, road ends and, uh, and ditches. Uh, which is sometimes where that material finds itself uh, if we don't have a means to collect it. So again, April the 25th for that event. Um, and in conclusion, uh, you'll notice on the agenda there's some information concerning the maintenance of a private cemetery on Buncombe Road. You may recall that several years ago, many years ago, we were approached um, by a family and asked if we would maintain what is referred to and what is a private family cemetery. And we agreed to do that because in that cemetery is located the first mayor of the city of Greer. Um, there was no one that was being able to maintain that property and uh, we felt that it was in the public's best interest for historical preservation reasons that we would continue to do that. Um, we now have a member of that family that has returned to the area. Uh, and they are thanking you for your years of service and main, maintaining that facility, uh, but they are going to take over that, that maintenance of that family area. They did ask that I would share with you uh, this evening uh, a short uh, remark. It says, the Bailey family is very grateful to the city of Greer for the years. It has assisted in the grounds maintenance of the Bailey Cunningham Cemetery. 
I know this pleased my mother, Jean Bailey, very much during her last years, but as my husband and I have moved back to the area, we will assume all maintenance responsibilities. Uh, we are now laying garden cloth and adding river pebbles to the entire area. We also have contacted the Chicora Foundation in Columbia, a historic preservation organization to assist in the repairing of the broken headstone for Captain Michael Cunningham. Once again, our sincere appreciation, uh, Ms. Jan Bailey. Uh, and she asked that we would communicate that to you as well. That concludes my report. Um, tonight, I would ask your consideration for four items in executive session. One of those is an economic development matter, and three are personnel matters, three individual personnel matters. Thank you, sir. We'll move to items of new business then, the first of which is the first and final reading of Resolution 420-2015. This is the allocation of the Greenville CDBG and Home Funds for program year 2015. Mr. Sell joins us at the podium, and I believe Mr. Livingston is in the uh, back of the room there. Welcome, Mr. Livingston. Thank you for joining us this evening. Mr. Sell, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Council. Um, I I want to bring some new information to you. Um, the resolution, um, as you recall, has the allocations uh, that were presented during the public hearing held uh, in February. Uh, those amounts are the same. Uh, contained within uh, those amounts are the allocation, or the allocation for subrecipient funding. Uh, contained as new information in your packet tonight is the report from uh, GCRA, Mr. Livingston, in regards to recommendations for uh, allocations based on the receipt of applications uh, for those funds. Uh, I can uh, I take a couple minutes to briefly go over uh, that new information with you. There were six applications that were submitted uh, for funding uh, for the $40,000 uh, that, that was available. Uh, of those six, all six were funded um, with a uh, funding amount. Uh, if you look in the uh, in that particular report, starting on the third page, uh, and on pages one, two, and three, titled uh, "Subrecipient Funding Request for FY 2015 to 2016," uh, there's a chart kind of outlaying uh, the process and, and the agency that was requesting the funds, the program that they were offering, the amount of funding that they were requesting, the details of the program, how those funds would be utilized, uh, and then a column that shows the funding that. Uh, have been allocated uh, to that program, if any, over the past couple of years, and then a third column that shows what, how many years going back that that program has received funding uh, from, uh, as a subrecipient. And then the final column is the staff recommendation for this year's current funding. Real briefly, uh, in the report, uh, the Greer Parks and Recreation Center, the Need More uh, Youth Summer Camp, uh, funding request of $22,137.77. Total amount that was funded was $5,000. The uh, second program, Greer Parks and Recreation, the Cannon Center uh, Senior Program, that program requested $5,360.04. Uh, Total amount of $3,000 was allocated or recommended. Creative Advancement Centers uh, program requested the amount of $10,000. Recommendation of funding for $8,000. Greer Community Ministries uh, for their program, a uh, recommendation or a uh, request for $30,000. Staff recommendation uh, from GCRA is that that be funded at $15,000. Greer Relief uh, and uh, Resources Agency uh, request $22,000. Recommendation of funding of $7,000. And then finally, uh, Helping Hands of Greer uh, request of $2,000. Recommendation from uh, GCRA staff is to fund that program at $2,000. Um, myself and Mr. Livingston are available for any questions you might have. Council? <clears throat> um, one, I don't know, um, why was Nemo program only giving about $5,000? Good evening, uh, Mayor Dana, members of Council. Uh, if you take a look at the detailed information, that describes uh, the different applications. Uh, we took a look, staff took a look at the application request, and you'll notice that in the NEMO program, the amount that uh, is ex 
expect to serve is almost 3% less than what was served, actually served um, last year. We mean 50% less. Uh, the amount that was supposed to be served for the summer camp annual service typically 47, expected to serve this coming year is 50. It's been dropped almost 50%. Expected to serve 15? Six says here. Oh, no. Um, you mean 15? Uh, big or? Kids. Kids. That's what it says. Oh, no. Is that a typo? That's got to be a typo. 51. 51. Yeah, because. I don't know. How many did we serve last year? 47. 47, yeah. They're always around 40, 50 kids. And that's why I was wondering why, you know, they didn't get a few more dollars. And so I was wondering why they didn't get a few more dollars because they always um, serve, you know, more kids. There are three or four independent uh, reviewers that review the applications. That's what, that's what they report. You should choose me to Others? Is there a way we can correct that, or is that? There is. If, if we desire to. Um, not hearing any further questions at this point in time, I will um, open the floor for a, um, a recommendation to receive and a second, and the floor will be open for discussion. Second. Nice. Floor is open for discussion. I'd like to recommend we find a way uh, to give me more of this another three thousand. Because they have several more kids. You uh, I'm open to, I'm open to uh, discussions on, on where where the architect should come from. Well, you see the recommendation there. You'll um, have limited opportunity to move it around with only six applicants. Um, I'll, uh, How much did we give them last year? Last year, take a look at the uh, program <coughs> years down to 8,000 last year. So we're talking about, Mr. Griffin, how much did you want to? 3,000. 3,000, okay, yeah. gotcha. Just instead of three thousand, just give them two thousand, and, and that they take a thousand from rear relief and a thousand from um, community ministries. Mm -hmm. so, let's, let's take one second to give it a little bit of thought here, and a minute to uh, <coughs> look at what options we might have. We do appreciate the insight that we get from our folks there, and in the past we have certainly considered those recommendations and want to be uh, considerate of the time and consideration that that staff gives to analyzing each one of these. Mr. Livingston, is, is there an opportunity recognizing that there appears to have been a typo, um, again, whether that was in the application or in the review, I'm not exactly sure where that occurred. Um, the, the motion that council has is to adopt the resolution uh, for uh, the funding in its entirety. Um, if council were to approve the resolution, is there opportunity for you and your staff to revisit that 
but because we, we did discover that there's it's not 15 participants it's 51 participants and the basis of that decision was because of the reduction I can certainly check to see if it was a, a typo on the part of staff uh, it, it could be in the application that we submitted I certainly acknowledge that if it, if it was not because this is a competitive process we would not make Mr. Lucson, I, I was, I'm sorry, I was using my calculator. If the potential mistake was made by your staff in the analysis, it could be revisited. But since it's a competitive process, if if the if it was a typo on the submission, then it would not be allowed for a change. At least staff wouldn't change. The council can certainly make a change. Okay. I've reviewed the uh, applications we submitted to GCRA and the numbers uh, totaled for the indication of very low income and low moderate income entities that are being we served and it's a uh, total of 47. So I, I'm not sure where to get to the I don't see a number where it says number of unduplicated plans benefited annually. I don't know if GCRA funds, I don't see a number. Okay, I don't see this or something like that. So it looks like this is our error. Well, given that these are all worthy needs, and certainly we, we like to support as much of the community as we possibly can, realizing that, um, that, that's, that that summer program is of uh, real benefit and value to the, uh, the need more community after some discussion, may be appropriate for us to proceed with um, um, motion on the floor to accept the subrecipient um, recommendations uh, but to amend to simply move um, a thousand dollars from Greer Community Ministries funding uh, so that that number instead of fifteen thousand dollars would become fourteen thousand dollars move a thousand dollars to the uh, Greer Parks and Recreation Need More Summer Program and then to move a thousand dollars from the Greer Relief and Resources Agency in a similar fashion to the uh, Career Parks and Recreation need more summer camp. That would give us a total of 7,000 for the uh, camp. Uh, and while it does have uh, impact to uh, both the Greer Community Ministries and Greer Relief uh, agencies, it allows um, the bulk of our funding to uh, stay in place for uh, other programs. Okay. 
Well, you apologize for the error. Um, we'll get you a response back. I have a motion and a second. The motion was made by Councilman Bettis. Councilman Bettis. Mr. Bettis, there's an opportunity here to uh, amend the motion to uh, move $1,000 uh, from Greer Relief and from uh, Greer Community Ministries uh, to the uh, City of Greer Parks and Recreation Need More Summer Camp. Uh, and then uh, there'll be an opportunity for a second in that regard. Make that amendment. Councilman Griffin, second. Councilman Griffin. Griffin. No, he, he second. I mean. All right, Chief. We'll need a second to the amended motion. And I'll second that amendment. We have an amended motion then to accept the recommendation with uh, the change that is amended to move $1,000 from the Greer Community Ministries uh, allocation. Mm -hmm. And a thousand dollars from the Greer Relief and Resources Agency allocation to the Greer, uh, City of Greer Parks and Recreation Need More Summer Camp, uh, giving them a total of seven thousand dollars. Greer Community Ministries fourteen thousand dollars, and Greer Relief seven thousand um, dollars. That comes as an amended motion and a second. Six. For, further discussion. Greer Relief would be six thousand. Excuse me, six thousand. Yes, correct. Other comments? Clear as to the changes? Ms. Duncan? Mr. Airwood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Gilbert? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And, and uh, we do appreciate the work that you all do in that regard. And uh, occasional mix-up keeps us on our toes. So thank you, sir. We, Mr. Reynolds, I hope you won't mind if we mess around with a little bit of your money as well. Too. <laughs> 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 Mr. Council, we have the first reading of ordinance number 13-2015. This is an 11th supplemental ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of City of Greer, South Carolina Combined Utility System Refunding Revenue Bond Series 2015 in the principal amount of not exceeding $4.7 million authorizing the Mayor, City Administrator, and the General Manager of the Greer Commission of Public Works to determine certain matters with respect to the bonds, prescribing the form and detail of the bonds, and other matters relating thereto. You join us this evening to give us a brief overview and explanation of Ordinance 13-2015. The floor is yours, sir. Okay, well, first of all, I'm going to follow the mayor that the heading is not longer than the state of the bottom of the long time. I apologize for that. Next time I'll make it a little longer for you. Um, sorry about that. Uh, mayor, council, uh, come to you tonight. Um, Bruce E.P.W. has got an opportunity to refund some debt that we issued back in 2010. The original issue was about $6.1 million, and the current balance right now is right about $4.8 million. The total was outstanding. And we've got an opportunity. Those bonds were issued uh, private placement at uh, BBT. Uh, or 3.07%, I believe it is. And we feel like the market is there to somewhere be around 1.75% based on some figures we put out. So what we're asking for is the authorization to move forward with this with a timeline of uh, first reading tonight, second reading at your next meeting. Uh, we would uh, issue our fees in um, probably mid-July, get those back and open those on the first of August and close them on September 1. Uh, the September 1 date having to do with the issuance of the bonds have a call date at 9 uh, September every year. We do it any early, we do some negative arbitrage, and we'll save we'll cut the savings and see if you And uh, the savings there are roughly around uh, $300,000. Uh, you minus the legal fees and the associated financial uh, policies, we're probably around $200,000 that we're going to save. Deal. Entertain a motion to receive. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Further questions? Discussion. Ms. Duncan. Mr. Airwood. Yes. Mr. Griffin. Yes. Ms. Booker. Yes. Mr. Dumas. Yes. Mr. Bettis. Yes. Mayor Danner. Yes. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Next item for us this evening is a bid summary regards the playground, which is a, in which we are going to have a poured-in-place safety surface 
Ms. Cunningham, you want to give us uh, an update on that project, please, ma'am? Uh, yes, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, on March the 5th, we uh, opened proposal for the installation <coughs> of a port in place safety uh, service for the playground here in Grizzly Park. Uh, we should have the bid opening sheet that lists the uh, four bids that we did receive. Creative Playscapes, uh, certainly was the lowest at $42,610.92. Uh, there's also a proposal summary that lists where each of the playground companies that submitted proposals for their um, um, creative playscapes is from Matthews, North Carolina. Uh, we called, we, were, we wanted to make sure that their numbers were correct because there is a big difference. So they, we called, we spoke to the owner of the company, they rechecked their numbers, they verified uh, they're confident in the number that they gave to us, they're a smaller company. Uh, they don't have a huge overhead, so they're able to do uh, these types of jobs uh, much more efficiently. Um, and they assured us they would provide excellent service. And that we uh, also checked through their references, uh, Christ Church Episcopal School, Rutherford County Schools, as well as the South Carolina School for the Deaf and Blind, all gave power recommendations uh, for their installation of the playgrounds surfacing. Um, so I'd like to ask permission to approve yeah. Okay. So we can proceed. Council? Make a motion we accept creative playscapes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Thank you for the explanation. I am always concerned when I see mm -hmm. three Low bidders prices. within a thousand dollars each other and one twenty thousand dollars <coughs> later. It was somewhat disconcerting to me to see that, but uh, we'll take them uh, at their word then. I have a motion and a second. Any further comments? Ms. Duncan? Mr. Aaron Wood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council in executive session this evening we have, thank you. In executive session this evening we have one economic development matter and three personnel matters to consider. Do I hear a motion to adjourn into executive session? So I move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Aaron Wood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council on Executive Session, we've considered one economic development matter and three personnel matters, taking no action in regards to any of the matters brought before us this evening. Do I hear a motion to adjourn from Executive Session? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Ms. Duncan? Mr. Aaron Wood? Yes. Mr. Griffin? Yes. Ms. Booker? Yes. Mr. Dumas? Yes. Mr. Bettis? Yes. Mayor Danner? Yes. Council, we stand adjourned.